Today on the channel, something entirely different from the Mythic Legions, from the Four Horsemen, we've got Perp Lore. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for something entirely different, something new discussed on the channel here. As today we're talking about, via the Four Horsemen, we're looking at Mythic Legion figures, specifically Purplore from Mythic Legions. And Mythic Legions is a very cool, very popular toy line out there. Very akin, I'd say, to Super 7 and kind of their business model out there. They have a pre-sale for you know, 30, 60 days, whatever it is. Uh, you buy it, and then it's made to order. Comes around about a year later. Very similar to Super 7, as you know. Some classic, really cool-looking figures out there. Google them. Google the Four Horsemen. Google Mythic Legions. You'll see some tremendous figures out there. And uh, they've branched off into Cosmic Legions now. All kinds of figures. And the Four Horsemen has designed tons of figures over the years. To me, Masters Universe Classics, some of the best works they've ever done. So a very popular line that flies a little bit under the radar, but big time for collectors that love them. They are all in on them. And I can't say I'm all in. It'd be very expensive to be all in, as these are a little pricier figures, of course. But for me, I guess my action figure mind out there is I have to have connection to the characters. Uh, I, you know, G.I. Joe, wrestling, whatever we're talking about, I have a connection. I grew up watching them. Uh, I played with them as a kid. Uh, I like the movie, the TV show, the animated series, whatever it may be. There's that connection, then the figure connection, bringing it home. Mythic Legion, I'm all for giants, orcs. Things like that are cool, but I don't have that connection to them, outside of them being a cool figures. And I don't really collect anything just because it looks cool. I've never been that way. Uh, but then you're probably saying, well, why are you buying this Mythic Legion out there? Well, it's a little different here. As we all know, well, we probably all don't know, but Mythic Legions did the, like I said, the He-Man classics back in the day. Well, that went away, they moved on, but the Four Horsemen, a lot like me and probably a lot of you guys out there, have a deep love for He-Man, the history of He-Man and the cool figures out there. So what they've done is they've released a few figures over the years that have been Masters of the Universe inspired in their Mythic Legions line. And today we're going to take a look at Purplor, which you can imagine who it looks like, Panthor, of course. He's not flocked though, I don't, I don't think at least. Uh, so it's a really nod. They've also done this before with uh, Battle Cat trap job and we'll compare it to those two because i did buy those two loose fairly recently if you saw my weekly purchases video so we'll compare it to those a little bit and we'll talk a little bit mythic legions as we dive in as i have never unboxed one of these before so new ground is broken my scissors are ready and we're ready to go but we're going to do this unboxing like all the other unboxings on the channel we're going to take a look at the packaging we're going to talk about it we're going to unbox it we're going to talk about it and we'll see where it goes from there first thing is thin card on this one but listen you definitely got some stuff floating around in there. So it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out, how this looks and everything else. Uh, but cool packaging. We got the big bubble card there, blister card pack. Uh, it looks like it is not vacuumed in. So this can be removed and placed back in the package uh, by the way it looks to me. So we'll have to dig there. They got the Mythic Legions logo. We got Purplore or Panthor. I might slip up and call him Panthor a couple of times as to be expected. Uh, but you got a lot of accessories in here. As I shook them around, you could feel them. You got kind of that card there. I believe this represents what uh, uh, faction he is a part of. I believe that's how they do that with these Mythic Legions. And then you got a little bio card on the side right here. So uh, I guess let's read the bio card right now since it's on the side. Uh, let's see. Called away from his, ho his home in the shadowed forest city of Vathura. I probably pronounced that right. By Gorgo Authorblade. Oh my gosh. The evil warrior Purplor is as renowned for his stealth as he is for his swordsmanship. Growing up in a city so shaded by trees that his life has been spent in darkness, Purplor is well suited to scouting missions that require quiet and cunning. He played a key role in the siege at Borgnar, but after tasting defeat at the hands of Atlas armies, Purplor finds himself battling the harsh terrain of the wasteland, searching for refuge. So, I guess a little backstory there. Uh, to me, he's uh, Panthor brought to life, and I'm going to put this in its own shelf in my Master's Universe collection is how I uh, am going to see it there. On the back, I am guessing this is a little bit of a checklist going up down the side. 
Uh, you got a little cool artwork there. A very was a Frank Frazetta inspired is almost what it reminds me of. Uh, it feels like that kind of stuff. The old Conan type things. We've got a lot of wording down here. What is this about? Looks like it just kind of describes the story of the Mythic Legions. And I'll take a picture of that and you can pause the video. I'm not going to go into this couple of paragraphs thing. But unboxing this will be interesting. MythicLegions.com, SourceHorseman.com, StoreHorseman.com for those following along at home. But it looks like you just got the plastic. And you can, I believe, just kind of slide this backing card out. So that is a neat feature there. I can see some people keeping this, putting it back in the plastic, stuff like that. So then you get this thick, heavy-duty card. You get this cool background going on there. Very uh, Mordor-esque, very Lord of the Rings-esque, very fantasy-driven here. And you got a lot of pieces going on. So we got pieces, uh, see you later. And we got more pieces falling out, see you later, see you later. Holy cow, we dump all this. So we got a lot of accessories here. There is a lot of going on. And then he has a bubble card, fits out just like this. See you later off to the side. And then he is all twist tied in, of course. There he is, old Purple R, looking only like a Purple R could look. See that big sword going on? Uh, but yeah, he is all twist tied in. Let me uh, untwist tie him. There we go. There's one. There's two. And these have been out for a few years. These I've seen these in the past, but I never dabbled. Uh, but then you guys know about... Six months ago, what was it? I picked up that Masters Universe collection, getting me itchy for some other things. Just all in at the He-Man. I've told that story before on the channel. Throw that there and off to the side. And we got Purple Ore out of the package. Uh, I just all in on He-Man. These just fit in. They're about relatively the size of the He-Man figures. Uh, it just seems like a cool thing to go here. And let's just talk about Purple Ore as his base kit right here. How he is based. And... It looks very good. It's very purple. I don't see any paint problems in the plastic. I don't see anything like that going on. You've got the green eyes, the cat-like head, of course, as Panthor Purplore would have cat ears. Very, very solid. Articulation-wise, you got the head that moves. Uh, Single-jointed elbows on this one. Single-jointed knees. He does move at the waist. So you have a thigh swivel. Yes, big thigh swivels on this one. The ankles move all over the place, side to side, up and down, just like you'd want them. But no double jointed, no really fancy, overly fancy articulation on these. Uh, he does have his kind of, gosh, I don't even know what you call it, like a gladiator type skirt here, some protector, some body protector stuff going on. Uh, he's got a ton of that. And then he's got big kind of steel boots, shoes, whatever you would call those. And then his gloves and hands do move. Move at the forearm, move at the wrist as well. I forgot to mention that. And you stick him here. Doesn't even need a stand, technically. He just stands by himself. I'm sure he fits on a ringside collectible stand, though, if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, fits like a glove. So if you need a stand for him, ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code Kyle. Save 10%. Say it all the time. But he fits perfectly there. Uh, he's got his huge sword going on. A nice brown against the silver with all kinds of different, like, kind of hieroglyphic things. Something you'd see out of, like, the pyramids or something. But very cool look going on right there. So he does have that. He does have shoulder gauntlets as well. So these shoulder gauntlets pop in here on the sides. Uh, so he can have some armor to the side if uh, you're looking to do armor and stuff. So he's got two of those, one for each shoulder. And they do plug right in the back there. He's got plug-ins right in the back. Very easy to put in. So we got that going on. Uh, what else do we got here? So we talked about the big sword. And then he's got this kind of little knife, kind of handled knife. Very similar. You got the gray going on. You got the brown. Uh, kind of vibrant brown, almost shiny brown with uh, different extra spikes on it. Like it was made out of trees where he apparently lived in the forest. And they added those pieces to him. So we like that, of course. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. And I have no idea what this is really supposed to be. Can I figure that out? I don't know. We got some silver. Oh, it must fit in his back. Maybe. Yep, it does. So he's got this silver apparatus going on here. And I'm trying to see what possibly the reasoning could be for that. I don't know. I do not know. But this is fit in his back. So it is to go back there. And it's got two holes in the back. So I'm not sure exactly where we go. Maybe I'll figure it out for the glamour shots. But I'm kind of boggling my mind. I don't see anything that would connect into these two little holes. So interesting. And then, like I said, this thing, I don't know what this is either. It looks like some kind of a hand. Oh, I think I maybe figured that out. There you go. So this is just the handle for the shield here. It plugs in so we can hold it. It's the handle. 
And then you got a nice shield that matches the sword as well. Got nice greens against the tannish brown there, kind of metallic going on. So he's ready to protect himself. Uh, and then you got a belt, and we've seen these come with a lot of the Mythic Legion figures in different colors. Uh, just kind of a belt that goes around him, so you can use that. But then the cool thing about this is it is a two-in-one figure. So you can have two figures here, one figure here, do it however you want to. Uh, the heads just pop off very easily, come off very easy, uh, like a Marvel Legends or some of those that are made to be removed. just pops off very easy. Uh, but then you can put this on. It's a, an orc head that matches this body. So let's say you're not a Masters of the Universe type fan. This is just a two-in-one, a little nod to those collectors. Getting the most out of your collectors. People will army build these. People that just want the orc version will get that. Or if they just want He-Man version, Panthor, like me, they'll pick it up for that. But you can do a two-in-one. So as you can see here, we do got a orc-style face here. Very cool. Fits the body. Purple, green eyes, nice teeth or tusks maybe in this guy's point. Uh, but you can have really a two-in-one figure this way. Uh, so you can mix and match and do that, which I think is really cool. And like I said, it gives the He-Man fans something. It gives the ones that aren't He-Man fans something. Or the completists out there, maybe they army build, maybe they buy two of these. Uh, so you do have that going for you as well. And then the cool thing here is, now let's really talk Panthor. So you got the tail. And the tail, obviously you don't need it for that orc, but you do need it for him. And it just fits right in the back, pops right in. Easy enough, slides in, and then bam, there is Panthor. He has a tail. He is ready for business. But then this is a really cool piece. Uh, for when you have the orc going on, you just want the head on here. But when you really got Panthor going, if you're going to display him like I am as Panthor, this is like a cowl. It makes him more cat-like in the shoulders. Just slides right over the back, just like so. And then you pop the head right on there. It gives him a little bit more cat-like uh, body structure there. Uh, so as you can see very easily here. And we'll glamour shot it out. I'll have all kinds of videos and stuff, and we'll have these all put together. Um, but that is a really cool point of difference there. That really makes him feel more Purplor or panthor S. But if you remove this, you put the orc-style head on, it is purple or like that. So really is choose your own adventure. That's what I like about something like this. Uh, but it's really cool. It's like if Panthor, you know, somehow Evelyn had some magic, made him a, a being, a human being type thing. I don't know. If, I don't know what you call it, but uh, made him a walking, talking cat. This is what it would turn into. And maybe on the same token, maybe the sorceress would do that and she would turn Battle Cat to life. And we got Battle Cat going on right here. So it's really cool to get kind of the yin and the yang, Battle Cat, Panthor, taking their cat fight to the humanoid fight. You could do that in your collection. And I should say, a lot of reuse between these two. The feet are basically the same, but then you get the different colors. The heads are the same, but the painting of the colors. Uh, like I said, Mythic Legions, the horsemen out there, they're no different than anybody else. They're going to get the most out of their molds. That's what they did here. But I love the yin and yang. You can't have one of these without the other if you're going to display them with your Masters of the Universe. That's how I see it. And I love having the Battle Cat and Panther difference going on here. And then even bringing it a little farther here, uh, Cronow, I think it was called. It's their take on Trapjaw. So it looks like trap job, but looks different enough. This is the kind of stuff I love out of the Mythic Legions. I want to have a history with these characters like I have with these in the He-Man universe, but updated, maybe changed around. How about reimagined? That's what we're getting across the board here. And I just think that is really cool. I know they did, I believe, a He-Man Skeletor really back in the early days. Those figures are hundreds of dollars now. It'd be great if they re-released it. Not great for Mythic Legion fans that have been there since the beginning, but somebody like me coming in new... I would love that, but I don't see that happening. So I guess I'll be happy with these three. Uh, but if any more Masters Universe inspired characters exist out there or some are coming in the future, I think I'm going to jump in because these do display fairly well with the classics. They fit right in there, uh, kind of size wise, everything else. I just think it's a really cool touch, a really cool feature. It's something I'm here for. I'm here for it all day long. You guys know I love the Masters of the Universe. And these Mythic Legion figures are very awesome, very detailed, very high detailed. Lots of accessories as we've seen here today. Uh, definitely worth dabbling into. And I guess I should say, I did pre-order that four-armed Cosmic Legion uh, guy. I'm going to kind of fit him in kind of to this universe. But that was such a cool looking figure. You guys know I'm a sucker for uh, a hairy bipedal creature with four arms. I can't turn that kind of stuff down. And I did pre-order the last Mythic Legions 
kind of builder pack out there. I just thought it was cool enough and it was something different and it caught me at a weak moment. So we'll see. I might be building out this shelf a little bit more in the future. We also saw in a weekly purchase, I bought that Eagleless, I believe was his name. That is just such a cool looking figure. I couldn't pass that up. That's going to be a great 4th of July display in my house. Uh, I'll put him up 4th of July. Uh, kind of like I do with Halloween decorations of some figures. I think that would be a cool one to do. We'll unbox him on the channel one of these days, so stay tuned for that. But what do you guys think? You ever seen these before? Is this news to you? I know some people know about it. I really feel like the Mythic Legion, some of this Four Horsemen stuff, is like the best kept secret in action figure collecting flies under the radar but those that know they know and you can pick these up at big bad toy store i should have mentioned that earlier not necessarily these but others you can pick up and right now if you go to big bad toy store you can get their version of moss man and stinkor i believe they are shipping here in the next month or so so mythic legions pre-order is done for those but stinkor and moss man versions they are up on big bad toy store pick those up now or forever hold your peace they go up in value big time so if you get them around 50 bucks Right now, that would be the time. So Big Bad Toy Store, get those two. They will sell other Mythic Legion figures. So if you're looking, I always say uh, Big Bad Toy Store is the place to go because they don't charge you till it ships. And Mythic Legions, much like we mentioned Super 7 earlier, you got a year window. Uh, you pay the money and you got it. they sit on your money for a year. Big Bad Toy Store is not that case. Uh, they don't charge you till it ships. So I always recommend that for my Super 7 figures, and I'll say the same thing about my Mythic Legion figures. But you guys tell me in the comments down below, who are you looking for? What are you thinking about these? Have you ever seen these? Uh, did you know about these? Do you have any plans to get these? I think they're definitely something cool, something to look into if you're into this kind of universe and stuff like that. But let me know your thoughts below. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. More Mythic Legions to come in the future. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. Hit the old notification bell. Follow me on social media at SirPaul64 on Twitter and Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. And of course, ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Support the channel. So for Purplore and his friends, I am Kyle. I will see you guys all real soon.